Good evening. Okay. Sure. So I'm Jerry Riley. We are public order now. Um, I just want to say that um, everything so far has gone really well, and the talk of the community is that we got it, but we haven't got it yet. So there's still more work to be done. But we're on the verge of being historic. We're on the verge of doing something huge in this community. Something that's good, something that's affordable, something that plays out for democracy, it challenges corporate power, it reaches your pocketbook, it's sustainability, it's the future, it's organized thinking on our part, and we want an organized, thoughtful uh, agency doing our business. So we're, it's, we're on the verge of being historic. And I hope you see the significance of that. <laughs> now we have two uh, initial uh, news reports. Uh, we'll go that, then we're going to go to a few other people on, on uh, what we need to be doing. And you'll all be hearing all about this. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to Phil and Melody. <laughs> I guess I might need this. Phil never does. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm Phil Weldon, and uh, this Melody Chris like my wife, who's the tireless communication director for <laughs> And uh, I've got a, an advertising and design agency, and I've been doing what I can over the last year to get the, get the ball rolling here. So. Um, a little bit what we're going to talk about over the next few minutes, how we'll keep that ball rolling in a big way. So um, I want to tell you a little story, a brief little story, stories are good. 110 years ago, Pacific Improvement Company drilled six wells in the Carmel River bed, creating Monterey's first source of fresh water. How many of you folks knew that? Well, there you go. We've got, we've got a couple of the audience. Ten years later, Del Monte Properties purchased Pacific Improvement and built the San Clemente Dam on the Carmel River. So there we go. Somebody actually did something in this region. In 1930, Del Monte sold the water system to Chester Loveland with the agreement that Del Monte Company would get a preferred rate for 50 years. That's when the crap started. <laughs> right there. That's when corporate got involved. That was the moment. So there were, interestingly enough, this is 1930, there was a huge public outcry and the first call for a public buyout. That measure was defeated in 1935. First call. It didn't work, but they were pissed. Uh, same year, system ownership was transferred to California Water and Telephone. Over the next 30 years, uh, California Water and Telephone overdrew the Seaside Basin and added no new water sources to the area. Sound familiar? <laughs> so here we go, 30 years there. And in 1965, Cal-Am, our hero, bought the system. They continued the overdrafting and other failures, and as you know, ever since then, costs have skyrocketed. So, <clears throat> since the first call for a public buyout in 1935, several attempts have been made to take our water public in this area. The most recent was Measure O in 2014, which I'm sure you're probably all familiar with. Um, they have all failed. But guess what? Not this time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not this time. Yeah. Last year, my wife, Melody, um, discovered a key strategic insight that offered a huge marketing opportunity for public water now. And I'd just like her to spend maybe uh, you know, maybe three to five minutes, something to just describe for you exactly what it is that you discovered and how that plays into our strategy here. Melody? So, about a year ago, 
we had the Food and Water Watch chart where we were number nine out of the top ten most expensive water systems in the country. Well, that was something, <clears throat> but it wasn't great news. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't something you could write a headline on, which was hard. But we PR'd that a bit. And then I got this letter from Cal-Am that said, well, the average person's bill is going to go out by, I can't remember how much it was. And I looked at the Food and Water Watch chart, and I added, just did some simple math, and I went, wait a minute, that's going to make us the most expensive water in the country. I'll bet on it. And um, so I called Mary Grant at Food and Water Watch, and I said, check this out. I think we just went to uh, number one. Can you guys redo the, uh, can you do a new survey? So, because we need to use this in our campaign. She said, well, let me check it out. And so they decided that they would do that. They would redo the top 10. And sure enough, that's how we discovered that we were number one as far as the most expensive water in the country. And the one thing that I want to say about that too is that cal will fight that and say, we don't have the highest rates in the country. The operative word there is rates. When Food and Water Watch does the study, they take every cost, all the surcharges for cal screw-ups, and they all go together to the total cost of water to the consumer across the country. That's how we are number one. Total cost, not rates, which is what cal <coughs> wants to claim. Just so you know that. So um, as soon as we put that out, even before we got the verification from Food and Water Watch, people started repeating it back to us. And I thought, we have hit a nerve. This is great. Even the media was starting to repeat it back to us. And I thought, wow, we're on to something here. So, um, and cal -Am's reaction was bad. We were at a CPUC meeting when I think I first stood up and said, you know what, we have the most expensive water in the country. And then Catherine Stedman got up and said, I object to the characterization that we have the most expensive water in the country. That you have to do better than that. <laughs> Objecting to the characterization. Um, so up to now, we have not had a standalone brochure. One that you could just put in someone's hand and say, OK, you don't have time right now. Read this later. And um, we needed that. And so that's what we set about to create a few weeks ago, actually. Um, up to this point, and we wanted it to tell the whole story. You know, introduce us to people that have no idea who public water now is. And um, so that's where we're coming from with this new brochure. Up to this point, we've been able to reach about 2,000 people with our database, direct email, and our Facebook feed. So 2,000 people. There's 58,000 registered voters in the water district. How are we going to reach those other 56,000? What was the question? So I'll give it back to Phil. So the brochure was a start, but it was just a, it was it was a part of it. It's it's the little atom, you know. It's the little drop in the bucket. So here, here's what we're here to sort of. We're pretty excited about this, and uh, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> Not what like here's what we're going to do. Here's what we've already done, and that is on Thursday of this week. 35,000 of these little fellows right here are going out to the entire water management district. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So, so every household in the water management district is going to have one of these dumped on their front stoop by this weekend. That's it. They're going to have the whole story. So what we're doing here is we're getting out in front of it this time. We're getting out in front of it this time. We're getting out in front of, of Cal-Am. We're getting out in front of the community. We're driving the narrative this time. This is our story. We're telling it. Remember last time all those glossy Cal-Am flyers? Well, we're getting our story out there first. 
So now they have to react, which is a lot better than us having to react to them constantly. And this is probably the first of many flyers, but this is the one that is going to really set the stage for educating every Peninsula voter and making it a lot easier to get signatures on the petitions, because now people will know what's going on here. Um, so we have plenty of extra brochures. So the idea is we, we printed like 15,000 extra besides what's going to all the households on the Peninsula. Did I say 35,000? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we have total, total of 50,000. So find places to leave these, your doctor's office, all over the place, because they don't require anything but just somebody picking them up and reading them. And we've got lots. So we've got, we, we got a lot of people out there over the next week that are reading this brochure. So that should stimulate some signatures, I would guess. Somebody's going to see this and say, oh, wow, where do I sign? You know, that's... This is, that's what this brochure is all about, to drive them from, what's this about to, oh wow, where do I sign? And may so, I contribute. And may I contribute with my time right. and my dollars. So, um, so we definitely need your help. This next phase, this next 75 days, is all about doing everything we can to collect signatures and spread the word. You know, after, 70, after 11, April 1st, it's like, bang, that's it. It's a whole different campaign. It's a whole different campaign. And then, and then we really start having some big fun. So, um, Melody, is there anything else you want to say here? Yeah. OK, what do you want to say? Give me that. All right. <laughs> so it's been 100 years of corporate ownership of our water. It's time to take back our water from self-interested, self-serving corporations. It's public water now or never. So listen, folks, now you got the tools. You got the tools because that's so critical in a marketing campaign. You don't have the tools, you got nothing. So now you got the tools. Can you make it happen? Yes. 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 Right. Can you make it happen? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Ken. Put these everywhere. Thank you. Take Thank tons you. of them. Yeah. I want to take a minute to go over the just the inside of the first flap. The first flip. The first flap. <laughs> potato, uh, potato. The first, the first blue column on the inside. I want you to just notice the supporters we have committed. Mm -hmm. Last time you remember, we had uh, our congressman against us, we had all the mayors against us. Um, mainly, that was the biggest problem we had. But this year, we have Jane Parker, we have Platt Roberson, Mayor of Monterey, we have the Mayor of Marina, Bruce Delgado. They all gave us quotes. All the quotes relating to get the information, get the feasibility study done. It doesn't say buy Cal Am. The issue of this initiative is get the facts, do the study, get the information officially from some agency to do it. Right now we're in a he said, you said kind of dialogue. We say something, it's like Melody said, Cal Am says not true, or we don't believe it, or we're offended, or something. They never counter with facts, they're a PR machine. And they are money makers. They're protecting their money. They're protecting their income. We need to know that, use that, and get on it. Now, there are other ways. There are other ways that we're working. So, where's my? Where are you? Good evening. My name is Michael Bear. For those who don't know, um, I just want to thank you guys again for this. And I really encourage everyone to you know, to read it and to learn it because these are your your arguing points. These are the points you need to make. Um, so you really should uh, internalize the information here um, over the next few days. Uh, when I go out, I've I've been out gathering a few signatures and. If you thought a phrase, and it actually wasn't mine, I think George suggested it, but a great opener rather than, you know, are you a registered voter or do you have a Calamar bill, is have you signed 
the public water. Have you signed the petition for public water? Yes. There's, well, just, I mean, have you signed the petition? And, and it, there's two things about it. it. It changed the nature of the interaction I was having with people. First of all, there's a level of confidence. And after everyone, you know, after next week, when everyone's seen this, um, everyone should be, you know, most people will be aware of it. And it also is like, we don't have to explain anymore that it's in the, you know, it's, it, it's in the public domain. People, people know it. There are people who come up and say, no, what's that? That's fine. But it really, it's a, re it's a good one. I really recommend it. I, I found it to be much more successful in engaging people. Have you signed a petition for public bar? Of course, you got your, you're right there with your stuff. All right. Um, so George, we need to be out there on the streets, and, and you know, the people are going to read this and go, "Where do I sign?" So it's going to be real important. I think other speakers are going to be talking about um, how we organize that, but the post offices um, are going to be real important places, um, and, and just and maybe getting organized, uh, having people say, "Okay, I'll be there on a Monday," and someone else will say, "I'll be there on Tuesday." So. So that we are hitting these these uh, these good spots on a regular basis. I think someone else is talking about that, right, George? Someone else is going to discuss that. What I've been asked to talk about is a meeting, uh, beginning with a meeting that uh, George and Janice and I had this this morning uh, with uh, with the deacon Warren Hoy of uh, the Catholic Church, and he for uh, he is the uh, social justice coordinator for the church. Catholic Church is big on social justice. And um, the bishop has given his blessing to this as a social justice issue. Wow. <laughs> Particularly an economic one. It's, it's not fair to the poor. So, um, but he's going to be writing an email to uh, the priests and uh, getting us an entree to show up after masses on Sundays and table, um, and possibly to have us speak for a, a minute or two, um, or have um, the priests speak about it for a minute or two. You know, and say, yeah, they're going to be out there collecting signatures. So. Um, Deacon Hoy was saying they get about 2,200 people to Carmel Church for Mass. So we're going to need like five or six or ten signature gatherers. Um, and we're going to probably aim for once a month. At, and there are five uh, parishes with, within the Water Management District. There's a Seaside has a big and active parish, Pacific Grove, Monterey, Carmel, and Carmel Valley. So between now and the end of March, we'd probably like to hit each one twice if we can. We have to, uh, after, after the email goes out, George and I are going to follow up with the priests to um, set up a schedule and see what they can do for us. So we need to get organized. So uh, and we, and as Janice pointed out, we won't be doing it Super Bowl Sunday because people will be running you know, to get to the game. Um, but uh, probably you know, for several weeks between the middle of February and the end of March, we're going to be looking for a Sunday noon team to uh, to work with the Catholics. No yeah, question. Mm -hmm. Let dinner start in the next week or two. There's seven, eight hundred people every Friday night the, on the way. What's what's Lenten dinners? Lenten dinners. Okay, well, uh, we are working on getting this email. Uh, we're going back and forth with Deacon Hoy, and hopefully we'll get out this week, and that could be another opportunity. Thank you. It'd be great. All right, that's my little part. Thanks. But it's also, we have city council people uh, supporting us, and we've publicized. But what's particularly interesting is Seaside, has three of their city council members supporting us. That's the majority. So we only have two on that council, and one's Ralph Um But he's up for 
the election. I'm not going to say re-election. I'm not even sure he's going to run. But anyway, we expect to be busy this fall, but we're not going to be busy this fall if we don't get busy in February and March. We have a deadline to reach the end. We've got to do this. We just have to do this. We can do it. You can do it. Together we can do it. And with the help we're getting, with this kind of professional look of, uh, uh, and the simplicity of just explaining everything and putting it in a concise message, leading off with the major issue is we're the most expensive. Um, and, but a number of people out there have been asking questions that maybe we don't have answers for, maybe we do, maybe you feel less comfortable and more comfortable on however you're doing this. Uh, what I, I see Chuck out here, and I want Chuck to give us a few minutes on some of the questions that have been raised by signers or potential signers and they just raise questions about resisting. And if, if you're if you're okay, Chuck? Yeah. You have a little bit? Okay. And then we're gonna ask a few other people just provide some other insights as we go forward and we'll we'll solve a few problems. Ah. All right, Chuck. Chuck Chang. That's me. Hi folks. I want to say Chuck Chuck is the one that did the research that discovered Dennis Williams having the patents for the slant wells that Callahan is pursuing. Oh, and he's yeah. still in the mix of trying to evaluate his own work. But Chuck's the guy who did that. By the way, the <laughs> point... Dumb luck. <laughs> and the quote about, have you signed the petition yet, really came from Chris Mack. Because he passed it on to me, and I'm passing it around to Chuck. Fortunately, um, all you folks have gathered up and presented us with questions that you're getting and while you're trying to collect signatures. And four years ago, I was doing the same thing. And believe it or not, I got exactly the same questions that you've been asked. And between myself and a half a dozen other people, we generated some answers. And we feel that those answers are just as appropriate this year than they were, as they were four years ago. So, rather than me sit here and read this entire document to you, which is just kind of a time waster, I think, uh, what I'd like to do is make sure that you all have your email addresses uh, with Melody, Melody, or Merlene, or Jane. We're on the list down here. If, if you don't have your email address with one of those folks, I put a dozen of these back there, and you can just grab them before you leave, and it will explain what those questions were and the answers that we have provided. George is helping with this. Merlene is helping with this. So it's just, it's a collaboration. Uh, probably the one that we get the most questions about is, can we really afford to do this? And the reality is, it all depends on how much it's going to cost us over a 30-year period, and what the interest rate is going to be on the bond that we're going to have, and what some judge and some appraiser has decided that Callum's value is. Now, we believe that there is at least three ways to judge what their value is. One is, what is the cost per customer? The other one is what is their equity and their return on equity? The other one is what their profit margins are and their return on profit. And all three of those, as we analyze them, say that eh, somewhere between maybe 200 and 250 million dollars. Well, what is that gonna cost us over 30 years? It ain't bad. And the reason it ain't bad is because we save on their profit, which they are presently earning, and we save on the income taxes, which they pay, and a nonprofit will not have to pay. And those offset up to 4%, up to 250 million, the cost that we're expect that we'll be experiencing proposed by us, thought by us, hopeful by us. Actually, we could probably go a little bit further, but I'd rather not try to go any further than that. Go ahead. So I just want to make sure I understood you. Did you say at $250 million at a 4% loan, we can, we can just afford to pay the whole thing off in and we can years? And we can, we can also save some money on our bills. Yes. All right. Okay. Not a lot, but you know, maybe 10%. And 10% is better than the sharp sticking in the eye. 
<laughs> and much slower increases, I'm sure, too. Yes. We will dump those damn increases. <laughs> you know, if you don't already know this, Calam this for this year has already in, requested from the Public Utilities Commission another 12.7 and a, a two. I'm sorry, 12.1 and a 2.7 percent increase on their present billing structure. So you know, sit down and add 14 percent to your bill and that's what you can expect next year. Thanks a lot, folks. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Is this based on the supposition there will be a detailed plan? We're not against the desal plant, but there are all there are alternatives, and there those alternatives are being investigated, and those alternatives are less expensive than what Cal Am would charge us for their desal plant, which we will pay for and they will own, which I think is just kind of ridiculous. That's like paying rent on a house and, and you know living in the house but not ever owning it, and you know this is a situation where they're using water to take advantage of us. They're, they're a monopoly. And they can do just about anything they want because the CPUC goes along with everything they ask for. Now. Can you speak into the mic, please? I'm, I'm assuming, excuse me, I'm assuming that cal is never going to build their diesel plant. And, and the reason that I think that's going to happen is we know for a fact that there's going to be litigation. And that's going to hold it up to the point where that they're just going to fail. They're just not going to be able to do it. And my feeling is, and this is just my feeling, that we will probably end up with a diesel plant, but it, it'll end up being publicly owned. That's, that's what my hope is, at least. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought maybe with my big voice you could all hear me. Question in the back? Yes. Go ahead. Anytime they want to increase their rates or not their rates but their salaries, they just do it, and we won't have any say over that. Okay. First, first of all, let me tell you that if the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District takes control of it, and then it's a very good chance that that's going to happen because it'll get voted in. They do not make those decisions. Those decisions are made by a board of directors. Okay, so they have a board of directors, seven people on that board, and they're all elected, and they make those kinds of decisions for them. In our opinion, what's going to happen is, because there's nobody at the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District or in public water now that has ever run a water company. So I'm, I suspect that what's going to happen is the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District, after they determine that we can afford to buy them out, is that they will hire a professional, experienced water company manager. And that's going to do away with the problems of, well, we don't know how to run a water company. <laughs> Another question. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, just in terms of being able to uh, understand the issue and all its complexity while we're circulating a petition, it, it is important. It's good to get that person's signature, and then we'll later we'll deal with this this yeah. mindset about the issue. Mm -hmm. But we need to get it on the ballot. Right. So one argument is, if, if I can, because I don't have to answer, I don't have to know everything to do this work. I don't need to know all the details like Chuck knows or George and others. All I need to say, for example, is, well, um, we need to get it on the ballot so we can have a full public discussion. Right. With, would you be willing to sign that? Yes, okay, great. Thank you for your signature. The other thing is, like good customer service anywhere, if you go into a store, if I can't answer your question, someone asks me a question while I'm doing signature gathering, the answer is, I can't answer that, but I'll get you an answer, and I'll call you back. So we don't need to have an answer right on the spot. And we also don't have to be 
Now, I think maybe sometimes people think I can't go out and gather signatures because I don't know everything about the issue. You don't have to know everything. The safety valve is we will get people an answer, whether they like it or not. Um, if, we may not get a signature out of them, but we don't have to um, feel that we can't start getting signatures because I, I'm not fully, I don't know everything about the issue. We don't need to know, we only need to know enough to get people to sign. Well, you're getting to sign. <laughs> yeah, and then oh, tell them we'll get an answer. Yeah. I, here, here, let me just say, too, is that I think, I think you're going to be very surprised when you read through the brochure how comprehensive it actually is. Just in terms of giving people, you know, that's, it's probably way more information than most people want. And yet we've kept it very simple. That was the key. That was our focus in writing that brochure. Let's not go over their heads, but just give people just the basics. So that's, that's what that was about. So please keep that in mind. And actually, any questions <clears throat> that you encounter when you're out gathering signatures, you can just send them to the website. Because all they do is fill out the contact form, yeah. and I get those questions. And then if I can't answer them, they go to George or someone else that can't. And we get back to it. So send them to the website, and any questions you can't answer is the simple way to do it. Uh, I'm a little confused as to exactly what is going on with that. Is it to do a feasibility study, as this seems to intimate here? Or it's exactly it right. It's required by law. Okay, so who's going to do the feasibility study? It, it will be done by the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District. Oh, they will do it themselves. They will do the, they will do the feasibility on their own. And how long will it take and how much will that cost? It's going to be limited to six months. Nine months. Nine months, thank you. And um, we expect that it's going to cost about $400,000, maybe half a million. But compare that with the $64 million that we're paying to Calam for not getting water. I think that's fine. It's just, you know, I think those are important questions. Yeah, they, they are, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I just want to clarify on that, too. Um, you know, it's not just the petition to get a feasibility study. Yes. It demands that, that the water management district go in good faith to acquire the company, which has a first step of making sure that it's feasible and in the public interest. But it's not like, it's not like we're just getting a petition to do a feasibility study. We're doing a petition to acquire the public water company. By the way, that if it is four hundred million dollars, that's a one-time payment of ten dollars for every connection that Galen has on the business. Ten dollars. Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Yes. Go ahead, George. Um, I'm finished. Unless there's another question, any more questions that I may or may not answer. <laughs> Thanks. Make it clear what the what, what, we're, uh, what the initiative does. The initiative says, do the feasibility study. It's required by law. Do it. They've had the option of doing that from ever since they've been in place, since 1978. They've had that option to do that. They've never done it. They've never initiated it. A few times there have been members on the board who have suggested to do this. They've never had a quorum. They've never had a majority. It's never been done. We came close last time. If we if we get, if this gets on the ballot and we get the votes. They are required to do the study. That's the first step. And that's why our quotes from Jane Parker and Mayor Rob Robertson and so on are saying get the facts. That's the first step. The facts are they have, they have nine months to do the study. So once that happens, they have, they have a deadline on completing the study. At the, end of that, at the end of that six months, they must hold some public hearings on what their findings are through the study. We're convinced that the cost is going to be affordable. The uh, public... Uh, the public interest side of it is going to be supported. The uh, local control issue is going to be supported. There are so many just public interest issues that we think will ultimately be described as a benefit to the community. That's why we're confident. That's why we're moving ahead on this. We, we absolutely believe that the study will show the things that we're talking about. If it's feasible, they must, if it's feasible, they don't have a choice of saying, well, it's feasible, but the timing is bad. That doesn't count. It's feasible, but I don't know that I really want it. 
They don't have the choice. If it's feasible, they must initiate negotiation with Cal-Am. If it doesn't go anywhere, they have the authority to go to the domain and go to court. The only thing that might stop it ultimately is if the court itself, and this is a, uh, these are appraiser type people, and it'll be a court of three, and this is pretty standard procedure on some government, um, just in a domain issues. This is standard procedure. There will be three people, the one side will pick one person, one side will pick another person, and then uh, they'll pick the third person. So it'll be a three person court. There'll be, it'll be testimony, there'll be all sorts of legal stuff being filed. This could get kind of pretty uh, expensive. Cali will say you can't afford it. They'll say you can't afford the process. They say you can't afford the bias. But they will not give us the numbers. And, and the attorney for American Waterworks, which is Cali's uh, parent company, that attorney has said, my job is to make it the, as expensive as possible for a public takeover. Not to argue the facts, just make sure it doesn't happen. So we, so we know that, and we expect that, and the district knows that too. So we're, we're going in with our eyes open. We had Missoula, Montana here describe their process. They went through in their domain. They learned a whole lot about how lousy the corporate structure was, the corporate uh, the infrastructure was, and they would succeed. They got the information. They got the price. They figured out how to finance it, and they went ahead with it. And the mayor who was here about eight months ago or so, I uh, said, there's never been a more important public interest issue that I've ever worked on in my life. And I would do it again all over. I sort of Missoula, Montana, and they're about our size. Their, their population is about 70, 80,000 people. So they're on the scale of us. We had Ojai here, too. Did the same thing. They didn't go to the domain, but they did the evaluation study. It came out as positive. They went ahead and, and did it. They succeeded, too. So just in the past year, we've had two public buyouts. We've had both of them here. We all know our history. Well, we think we know the history. We know the results. <laughs> it's good news. It's been done. Both times, particularly the Missoula, Montana case, beat the very attorney that sa has said, I'll make it as expensive as possible. Everybody wants to buy you up. They beat that attorney. Anyway, all I'm saying is, we don't know the final cost. But we're convinced that the amount of money that county takes for profit and corporate taxes, whatever that money is, will be enough to afford the, 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 the mortgage to buy them out, or the bond to buy them out. We're just convinced of that. We just need somebody else to say that, because we we're not going to buy it. The, the reason the district has to do this is they've got to satisfy themselves when they issue the bond or whatever, that they can do this, and they want to do this. That's what we're, that's where we're about. We're trying to convince them the community wants us to have it. Get on with it. And if you don't, we can replace you. Right. And two of them are up for election this fall. Are you running? <laughs> don't call me. I don't either. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> I, there, there's a few other things that I want to get uh, presented here tonight, too. So, but anyway, quickly. Can you tell us about this guy, Paul Bruno, who was here, and what his connection is? I understand right now, it's water and engineering. Does he have any kind of vested interest in Cal-Am? Does, does he have? Well, he's um, Paul Bruno, the name. Uh, he was here earlier, and we kicked him out. Uh, some of you guys kicked him out. He's been to the open one, <laughs> and he's asked questions trying to trap him. Yeah, he, he's a he, he's a he's a he's kind of a snake. Um, <laughs> but he but he runs Peninsula Engineering. And they have contracts all the time for cal -Am, but they don't have contracts with any water company. I mean, they have contracts with Marina Coast, and, and, and they, they do plenty of business around here. But he's a, he's a long-time activist, um, kind of right-leaning Republican. He's been the treasurer. They've had problems with him. He, he, he's a sneaky, slippery guy, um, and I don't want to demean him too much, but he's a, he's a, he's a ship for cal -Am. Um, and we didn't think he, he doesn't he mean it. He's an accountant. He, he has a cousin who is a smart guy who actually runs it. He does PR for it. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, but he, he, he doesn't yeah. run it, but it's his, it's in a family. It's a family that uh, And he, he he's a he's water master. by a cousin who has. He's 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 assistant water master from the uh, Seaside on the Seaside. Well, he's on their board of directors of the Seaside Water Master. I don't think he's. Um, anyway, thanks for that. Just cleaning up. Uh, 
I want to pass the hat, guys, because we have to do this. And so I want to go and get that started. But Janice, can you? Do you? Will you? Sure. And then I've got to call a few more people. Can you hear me okay? No. 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 Microphone. <laughs> My name is Janice, and I'm in public water now, but I, I want to talk about the sign. And this also was designed by both Melody and Phil, which was fabulous because I love the colors. I see them around town, I see them popping up. But not only do, does it say a lot, but I mean, it also shows the support that we have around the peninsula. But a couple of things on this sign, the sign tells it all. One of them is affordable. 46 cents on every dollar leaves this peninsula. Okay. Um, over 508, or excuse me, 286 million Americans receive their water from public agencies, from community services. Um, affordable it also means um, bringing the prices back down. Another word that I like is public. That means you and I. We all know people who have been affected by the increases in the rates. We all know people who have had spiked water bills. We all know people who have broken pipes out in front that haven't been explained. Um, public, that's you and I. These, this is bringing back jobs to the peninsula. This right here, and that means a lot to me. I want to see the jobs come back. Every time you make a phone call, it goes to a staff building in Illinois. If you pay your bill online, it goes to Illinois and to Florida. If you pay your um, check by, like I do, it goes to Pasadena. Also, there's offices, Calum offices in San Diego and Sacramento. We want to bring that all back to the peninsula. We want to bring our jobs back. We want to hire local, and we want to make it affordable, bring the prices back down. So hopefully we'll see some more signs popping up, and thank you for your support. Merlene or Amy or Dan, who wants to jump up? Merlene first. Oh. I never thought I'd be really eager to get up on a lectern and start talking to a crowd of people. But it's just, this is a darn good cause, you know? And um, so my little job here tonight is to talk about the, the mystery group that we keep hearing about, the MPWD. And uh, it's an acronym that people read and get confused with other MP da 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 does, MP da 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 da. I know when I first moved here, I kept reading the papers and I tried to get through an article and I'd say, God, there's no way I'm going to get this because it was too confusing to me. I came from the Bay Area where things were simpler. <laughs> but now it is the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District, and why do we have them? Well, Phil just told us how it came about. And, uh, well, not exactly, though. What actually happened um, that wasn't quite mentioned yet is that there was, after Kalam took over uh, the whole water district, the, um, a, a series of drought years came along and costs of water started up but the, the worst thing that happened that people really hated here were restrictions on the water use. And the, um, that fact really, uh, it, it just went on and on and very draconian measures were forced on people. And it has turned out that when they look back on this, they think it was the Monterey Peninsula Water District that did that to them. They were actually continuing with things that cal -Am themselves started. And so it was the state and local people who decided that there needed to be somebody else in the mix, and they have a, had a state law made for the Water Management District to begin. And so they carried on, and they had a mandate to try to fix the situation and make it better. Well, um, the mandate said something to the effect that to solve the overpumping of the Carmel River and 
potentially be the agency in place in case the public decided to acquire Calam and the water system. So from that time, in 1978, it has been on the table that they could do that. But they have, for reasons unknown to me, been reluctant to do that. So who is the, the, uh, who is the water district? It, it is a seven-member board of directors that governs the district. Five of those directors are elected directly from the various communities involved here, five of them. Two of them come from a different source, still elected. One is a county supervisor, and the other is a member of the mayor's groups of the same, same communities. So all of these people are married, I mean, are elected. How long is their term? Six years? Four. four. Can you name them right? I cannot. I'll yield the floor to George after I get through here. <laughs> okay, then the, um, there's also a general manager who oversees a staff of 25 people plus in interns. The district's annual budget is drawn from property taxes and a water supply charge, which is handled by Calam, state grants, and further payments from Calam to cover the cost of the rebate programs that the district provides. However, that money ultimately comes from us. So, what is the Monterey Peninsula Water Management able to do? It has existing legal power to own and operate a water system. <clears throat> it has jurisdiction over the very area that Calam covers. And what has it done? It has sponsored or co-sponsored five approved water supply projects in the past, what, see, 10 years, something like that, eight years? They are the only group that has obtained other water supply sources for us. They have a very deep understanding and familiarity of the Calam system as a whole. And, as you've already heard, they have the power to proceed with eminent domain action if Calam decides not to sell to us, which they have declared they will not. And any other entity that would try to do what we're doing, not being a public agency, can't do that. They can't go to eminent domain. It's only a public agency that can do that. So, um, we are proposing the, the question about can the water management district run a, a system? We're proposing that they hire experienced professional water managers to run the business and try to retain all the workers that we possibly can. They know how to do this stuff, and it isn't rocket science, you know. These people, there are people who can do this for us, and we can afford them. So what are the five projects that um, the Water Management District has worked on without Calam assistance? One is they expanded the aquifer storage and recovery uh, in the winter using the runoff from the Carmel River. They've also drilled a separate well in Seaside to additionally bring up more water. That's called the Peralta well. You'll see it referred to in articles. They provided leadership for Pebble Beach and, and Pacific Grove to reclaim water. And they uh, used the water to water for Pebble Beach 
all of those golf courses. And in uh, Pacific Grove, uh, their golf course and their cemetery. And all of that had previously used drinking water from cal -Am. So all of that water was put into our drinking water system. And then they partnered with um, the regional, the Monterey Regional Pollution Agency to develop Pure Water Monterey, which is the recycling of water. And we will be getting some of that as well. So those are five ways in which the Water Management District has been the only agency, public or private, to provide more water to us. So I hope that gives you a clearer view of what the Water District is about. The uh, mayor, mayor uh, representative is Ralph Rubio. He's, he's anti what we do. Uh, Mary Adams is a board supervisor's member. She's in favor of what we're doing. She's in favor of getting the facts for sure. Uh, the three that are not running for election, they're in midterm this time. Bob Brower, he represents Carmel and Carmel Valley. He won't be up for two more years. Uh, Jeannie Byrne, uh, Pacific Grove and Pebble Beach. And Molly Evans from Monterey. Molly Evans, good guy. Uh, that we know, these are we know for sure. Um, Brenda Lewis represents Seaside. She's on our side. But her, her seat's up for election. So there'll be a Seaside election this November. Is she running for re-election? Uh, we're not sure yet. She's been talking like she's not. Um, and the other one, which is the district I'm in, I don't appreciate your question, but we'll see. Andy Clark is a representative there, uh, and that's a piece of Seaside. Just draw a little, just draw a little circle around the, the nearest part of Seaside, Delray Oaks, and Monterey, and that's kind of a mixed bag of, of representation. But that's an Andy Clark seat. And he lives in uh, Delray Oaks. So the two elections this fall are going to be Andy Clark and Brenda Lewis. Let me just remind you, though, and most of you already know this anyway. Uh, this com this coming November. <coughs> Every election, every mayor will be running for elections. Mm -hmm. We expect this will be a topic of discussion. And uh, half city councils will be running. So it's a big, big, big electoral deal. Mm -hmm. And we're in the business of driving that, of driving that issue. We're in a position of making sure everybody responds to that question. And there are many ways that it can be done. But anyway, that's our schedule. It's working to our advantage. Gary has been uh, instrumental in helping to make sure that the whole approach to next November is going to work in our favor with all the, all the agencies that we're lining up uh, for support. And this is going to be a big deal. This is the, we're doing everything we can to make this happen. We still got to get the signatures done, and we still got to raise some money. And we're moving. We're moving in those directions. But we're, we're counting on you on the signature side. Let me get to Amy, and then I'm not sure if I had somebody. Dan, I think we're going to make a few comments. Okay. My name is Amy Anderson, and I've been working with uh, Public Water now for, I don't know, however long <laughs> I've been here. And I am here to be a cheerleader for getting out and getting signatures. Now, I, in the, I want to say in the Stone Age, when I was in junior high school, I tried out for cheerleader, and I didn't make it. But I'm going to do this, and I really want to get everybody excited, because as the first speaker said, it is now or never. It's up to us to make this happen. And for those of you who haven't done this, it really isn't scary. And you find that out the first time you go out. Um, it's easy, and actually most people that I run into that want to have any kind of discussion with me, they want it. They want to sign, or else they have already signed. If they're not interested, they just walk by, they go like this, and you don't have to worry about it. They'll let you know. They just, they just don't want to do it. So it's our issue. It's in the best interest of us and in our community. And we just want to find out with this initiative. 
We want to find out what the, what the study says. We want to ask the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District to do it, and we want to find out what the results are. Now, I really want to address mostly the people that haven't been out a lot, who have been hesitant to go out and collect. We need you. We really, really need everybody who is able to go out and collect. Um, there's a couple of ways that we're thinking about organizing people, and that, that's what this is about, is really getting uh, signature gatherers organized, because we've got, we've got a lot of territory to cover in two and a half months. Uh, the first one is what we've been doing so far, is to kind of go to the kind of the hot zones in front of certain post offices and Trader Joe's and different places in the community, farmers markets, and spend an hour or two, two is better than one, and um, stand there and get signatures. Now, I can't remember who said it. Somebody was up here and said, have you signed the petition yet? Have you signed the petition? That's what I've been doing too. And people, they know if they have or they haven't. And the people who have invariably thank me for doing it. So it's not like you're an irritant out there. They say, thank you so much for doing this. I have signed it. So it's, it's really a good thing and people appreciate it because we've all been paying CalAM bills. We all know what's going on. Most, most people, not all of them, read the papers, you know, listen to what's going on and they understand the, they understand the issues a little bit. And that's, uh, except I would say maybe once when I'm out for a couple hours, maybe twice, somebody asks me a slightly more probing question. But mostly, if I say, if I present that the initiative is about getting the answers to the feasibility. The, the initiative doesn't say you, you have to acquire Cal and become public. It's to get the answers to that. It's the, the answer of the feasibility study and is it in the public interest. Um, so that's number one. We go to these, and, and we're not organized on this right now. We just go out when we can. We go to, you know, in front of Whole Foods or Macy's or the post offices, wherever. There's a couple of other things that we're talking about doing that we would need to have some organization to do. One of them is on, on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, that we meet with a group, that we organize a central place to meet, whether it's at the Center for Change or it's in some place in Pacific Grove or at our office in Monterey, that we uh, come together and we get precinct lists that Gary will provide and we go out and walk precincts with a partner. So this is especially good for those of you who haven't really been out much and you'd see right away how to do it, kind of how easy it is, and, and ask the questions that you need to ask from experienced um, petition collectors. We're also still doing, and will will be doing, short trainings. We've got that kind of down to, you know, we've got some, you know, the, the really critical points, so we will be doing some trainings if that's needed. But if you are a little bit hesitant to go out, it would be great to join, go out with somebody, either on these precinct walks or whether you go to the post office or something and see how it's done, and you'll discover that it's really, nobody's going to, you know, eat you, nobody's going to bite you. Uh, they might avoid you. I made the mistake of going to Whole Foods the day before Thanksgiving. And I see people coming up and they go, shoo, that way, that way. They were just avoiding me, but you know, you just keep moving around. And I did have some really good conversations with people who were interested in stopping, and, and they signed my petition. Um, so what we need what we need to do is we need to organize, perhaps by an online sign-up sheet, for people who are willing to sign up for, let's say, every Tuesday from 10 to noon or 10 to 11 or something for these hotspots, whether it's a farmer's market or, or um, post offices or whatever. That is one way to do things. And now there's some people who may not be uh, comfortable walking. You know, they might have mobility problems or something. And they might rather go stand somewhere 
and, and do this and not walk. So we could end up dividing ourselves into a couple of groups so we can cover all the bases. But we would need to get organized to get people to sign up, as many people as can, you know, for a regular time slot on a day. Um, if we can find a coordinator to do that, somebody who loves to call people and organize them, then they can have the list and that would make it a lot easier to get people who say they're interested in doing this to kind of fill in the slots. So that's, that's the, the uh, collecting out in the public, in public places in the community. And then the other one is meeting with groups with the um, precinct maps. So you can go out with a partner and walk neighborhoods uh, on the weekends. It would be Saturdays from, I think we decided 10 to 2 or 10 to 3 or something and Sundays starting at noon because of church. Um, and we have yet to exactly decide on how we're going to, how and where we're going to organize those, those gatherings. <clears throat> So um, this, is, this is kind of the plan, and I am interested to find out, just right now, just give me an idea for the people that are here. Are there some people that would prefer to just go out in the community, and are there some people that would prefer to go uh, walking precincts? Who would like to go out in the community and stand at a particular spot? Who would prefer that? <laughs> yeah, actually, I've done that too with the people in my office. The whole number of people you contact, like I walk my dog in the morning, I take my good one at Mission Field Park, but I find someone and say, hey, how are you doing? Is that nice water? Are you drinking water lately? Well, <laughs> so just some. That's so, true. So, so some people are reluctant to stand up first. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's very true. I'm going tomorrow over to my. Um, my uh, dermatologist's office, and everybody there is interested in signing. They said, come on Monday or Wednesday. I said, great, I'll go in there and get people's signatures uh, to, to the place of business where my husband works. I almost wanted to take my, my uh, petitions today to the, the big uh, Planned Parenthood um, Roe v. Wade event, but I thought that was tacky, so I didn't do it. <laughs> but I wanted to. <laughs> so uh, how many people would be willing to do precinct walking? So we've got some people who are interested in, in one or the other. How, how many people don't want to do anything, don't want to go out? And how many people who would love to organize this, Twitters. call people and fill in the slots? We really need an organized pe person that would help do that. It's extremely important. And we maybe could trade off and have th four people. Somebody can do it one week, somebody can do it the next week, and just make sure our schedule is full. Are, is there anyone in here? who's willing to help us with that. It's really important. Phil! Thank you, Phil. You raised your hand. <laughs> Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. We need somebody to raise their hand. There, Dan, great. We need help with the organizing. Um, that's, I mean, that's probably one of the reasons that it's not being done as much as it would because nobody kind of knows well, who's going to be out there today and who's going to be out there today. We really need to be busy and commit ourselves to whatever it is, three hours a week, four hours a week out with our, our petitions. And, and as I say, you're going to find uh, that people are really willing to do this. They really care about it. Um, let's see. I think that, yeah, Michael. Is uh, anybody going to talk about the Women's March opportunity? Okay. Yeah, talk, yeah, events, special events. So this is this is our issue, and yes, question. Why does it have to be so complicated? I I just walked around my neighborhood, and knocked on my neighbor's door. Hi, I'm your neighbor. Oh, okay. How's how's your water rates? Uh, now we have a brochure. You can hand it to them. Yeah. And they've signed the petition. Yeah. Just go by yourself uh, or in the early evening. Knock on your neighbor's door. 
Tell them who you are. I'm your neighbor. It's a good point if everyone did that. The reason we're doing this, and it seems so complicated, is because we're lagging. At this rate, we're not going to have enough signatures. We have to get out there and make a greater effort. Does everyone understand that? This is serious business. That's why. Yeah. And we, and we have to cover all the neighborhoods. So with where we live, we've really got to get out. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, so when you encounter somebody who's not registered to vote, and they say they're going to do it, or if you have, say, a way to register, what is the sequence of uh, can they sign it? How, how long do they have to wait after they register, or can they, could you explain that? Because I, there are a lot of people who aren't registered yet, but they would sign it when they register. Well, I carry uh, registration sheets in my bag, so you can get those from the office, so you can handle a registration sheet. And then, George is going to answer the rest of the question. <laughs> This is, has come up a few times. If you carry a registration form, that's helpful. Um, but um, I talked to somebody into signing. They moved up from a Tascadero. They now live in PG, I think it was. Uh, and I said, sign it. But you have to register. Will you register? And she said, yes. And so I sent her. I, I mailed her an application. I didn't fill it half in because I already she already signed a petition, so I knew her address and name and all that. I could fill, it, I could fill in the registration form for her. Anyway, she did it. So all I'm saying is, the, the, the verification process will not take, the, the elections office will not check any signature until we turn everything in. So sometime in early April we'll be turning everything in, and that's the first step that anybody who has signed and they haven't registered yet, they'll be crossed off. If they're, if they're noticed, you know, they'll be crossed off. But if they're registered, by the time we turn it in, their signature will count. Uh, Dan, were you going to, yes, you were. And I'm going to ask for Larry, is he still here? Yes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Turner, and I have uh, handed in uh, more than 49 petitions. Um, and uh, I have a secret, which I will tell you as to um, how I've gotten all the signatures. Uh, a lot of people, though, say, well, of course, it's easy if you get signatures, Dan, you're so good looking. But that's <laughs> not really what it is. Um, I like this new thing of, um, uh, uh, um, have you signed the petition yet? Because now a lot of people are going, a lot more people are going to know about this. Um, up till now, I have been saying, excuse me, madam, or pardon me, sir, are you a registered voter in this area? And if they say yes, then I say I'm collecting uh, signatures of people just like you on my on this petition in an effort to qualify an initiative for the ballot for next November, I point to next November, um, so that uh, we can get rid of Calan and replace it with a public agency. I think there are a lot of reasons and it will save us a lot of money in both the long and short run. Will you help us get this on the ballot? If someone says yes right away, or if someone says I need more information, and actually in the process of giving them a little information, uh, I, I just show them, I say, you know, we have the most expensive water in the United States, and I show them the beautiful little chart we have, and I show them the difference between uh, what Calhoun charges for a month for a certain amount of water and what Marina Coast District charges, and I tell them uh, Calhoun doesn't really have any more expenses than Marina Coast has. This is all just uh, the, uh, uh, the way Calhoun is ripping us off from excess profits. I ask them if they know that Calum has a parent company in New Jersey named American Water Works. I ask them if they know that in the last seven and a half years, that company's stock has gone from $20 to about $90. That's four and a half times. And I say, no, the stock market's gone up. The stock market's only gone up half that much. They've doubled what the Dow Jones has done in the last seven years. And then I point to the chart again with one finger on Marina Coast at $40, another finger on Calum at $115, I say, this is the reason they're, they're just ripping us off. Okay, sometimes people will, which I, I say, all you, if, if I see they're listening, um, I'll say, all you're signing is helping us to get this on the ballot so that people can, um, uh, can vote on it. Some people will sign right there and there. If they won't, I give them a little card that we have. I say, go to this website here. I say, if you start reading things on the website, you'll get so upset with what Colin's ripping us off, you want to come back and sign two or three times. Um, 
And, and I, it, I try to get them to take the chart also. I show them it has a lot of information on the back. The point is that whether they say, yes, they'll sign right away, or I talk to them for a minute or two, and then they say they'll sign. Before they sign, I say, as long as you don't live in Marina or Salinas Prunedale, sometimes I'll throw them a big sir. Because a number of people up and say, oh, I live in Prunedale or I live in Marina or, uh, you know, so, because, you know, if we go out and we need about 6,300 signatures to get this, or, but not just 60, any old 6,300, we need 6,300 signatures of registered voters in the water management district. If we have, if we get 10,000 signatures, wouldn't that be sensational, 10,000 signatures? But if only half of them are valid, that's 5,000 valid signatures and we will fail to qualify for the ballot. So, I think it's important when people say, yes, I'll sign to um, say, as long as you don't live in, and then they'll say, I live in Carmel Valley, in Monterey, in the seaside, say, fine, fine, fine. Um, and now for the secret of how I've gotten all of you. But, but I, I, going back to this again, I, I'm going to try this thing with, um, have you, excuse me, sir, have you signed the uh, petition yet? See how that goes. Um, Excuse me, Dad. How many total signatures have you? Over 490. Okay, so here's the secret of how I do it. I've done it. I get my fat ass out there, and I spend some time doing it. If you don't spend any time doing it, you won't get. When I when we first started in October, I was getting at least 10, maybe 15 signatures or more an hour. I was at the farmer's market a week and a half ago on Friday morning, and the first 10 or 15 people I asked said, I've already signed. Also, strange things happen, having to do with randomness. For 20 minutes, at places where I've gotten signatures before, Whole Foods, the post office, the first 20 minutes, everybody says no. And you think, what's going on? But still, in an hour, I'll get 8 to 10 signatures. Last time I was at Whole Foods a few days ago, the first three people I asked said yes. This is what randomness is all about. If you put the time in, on a bad day you will get at least five signatures an hour. You'll, you will probably get eight to ten signatures an hour. Some days you may get more than ten signatures an hour. The point is, if you spend an hour or two a week collecting signatures at some half decent place, you will get at least one petition filled per week. If we'd all do that, we'll make it. And if you can spend three or four hours, even better. It's really not a lot. There's, um, there's a lot of hours in a week. And um, uh, if, if you get out there and do it, if you'll get out there and do it, if you'll spend the time, you can get the signatures, but you've got to get out there and do it. If any of you are uh, not uh, uh, timid, you know, um, what is it? The uh, Power Milk Biscuits, remember? Um, Garrison Keeler, they give shy people the strength to get up and do what needs to be done. If any of you would like to go out with me or some other people, we'd be happy to go out with you whenever and wherever you'd like to. Uh, just contact me. I'm not difficult to get a hold of, and you'll see that it's not difficult and it's not unpleasant. Do, do we need to have Dan have our name if we're doing it at Whole Foods? I know at one point we need it. Yeah. Yes. Um, if they ask for your papers, because I, I did get Whole Foods and everything. And they want to know who's going to do it. So if you want to do it at Whole Foods, just get in touch with me. I'll send you your papers and I'll bring them to the office and make sure they know you. The first time I was at Whole Foods, someone did come out and ask me for my papers. It's not really, I said, you can't do this yet. I said, oh, yes, I can. I'm in six, eight, and, and everything's been fine. <laughs> uh, Chris, I want to have Larry come up. Yeah. So just a real quick comment um, about going around your neighborhood. So I live in Carmel. I don't think there are any statistics or uh, whatever. Thanks for Carmel photos. 
not for the build. So if you live in Carmel, just go around your block, timid to say I'm a neighbor of yours. It's a very easy way to get the door open and people will talk to you. Um, do a block a night or a couple blocks, you know, a couple nights a week and just get your feet wet. It's really easy. You may find people at home or not. And it's right, right around dinner time. It's rougher, but it's rough. Uh, but it's getting late later. So um, I encourage you to just go out and take an hour before you have dinner and get, and get home from work or whatever you're doing. Get out there and just grab a few signatures and break the ice. And then pretty soon, you'll be going like I do. And you know, so take the thing with you to your doctor's office, stand in front of the post office. Pretty much, you got a bunch of signatures. Thank you. Come on, Larry, come up. Yeah, Gary, and then Well, my advantage to going door to door is we'll have to go door to door later um, once it qualifies because um, we're talking to voters. Uh, one advantage now in getting signatures is everybody on the list is a voter in your neighborhood, as opposed to if you're at a store, maybe 50% of the people are registered to vote uh, in the area. So there's some limitations. We get a higher validity rate. We do better because we have, we know who's registered. So it filters out all the tourists and people that are felons and all kinds of other <laughs> things that uh, don't work. So Gary, uh, is everyone clear that you can contact Gary and get a registered voter walking list for your neighborhood? Yeah, you have got that. Right. So you get more signatures if you use Gary's list because those the only people on those lists are registered voters. You go to 10 houses on the street, five of them may not be registered voters. What's the point of wasting your time doing that? You just go to the five houses that have registered voters, that's much more efficient. I've had really good success at the gas station. I pull up, and there are three cars right there, and there are three voters right there. Another really good one is with the hairdresser. There's women of those, you know, good in their hair color ever, and they're feeling pretty good, and they're stunning just like that. So, part of talking to the Let's have Gary, then we'll go to Larry. Gary. Larry Parrish. The other Larry. Larry. Uh, George asked me to speak because he thinks I like to meet with people and uh, I do. I do Good like job. To people. Yeah. So, um, anyway, we have signs, we have brochures, <coughs> we have sign, we have the community on our side. What we don't have is enough signatures. That is issue number one. Getting these signatures. If we don't get enough signatures, there's going to be no election. We're not going to get rid of Cadillac. This is going to be a big waste of time. It's been said before, I'm kind of repeating some stuff, but um, there's about 50 people here, which is less than half of our whole force that are supposed to be collecting signatures. I don't know where they are. If you know some people that are not collecting, that they're supposed to be, get on their case. This is not. This is not going to happen if we don't get these signatures. We're, little, we're just over halfway there, and we have less than half of the time left to get these signatures. Uh, how many people have not collected at least 10 signatures? How many people have collected more than 50? How many people have collected more than 100? Okay. We need, <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, we need, we need, we need a bigger effort. More top producers. Um, we got about 50 people here. If everybody went out for an hour, hour and a half a week for the rest, of, for the next 10 weeks, if you could fill one page a week, that would be 50 times, that would be like 3,500 signatures. It would be really close, you know. So we need to do at least that much. And hopefully there are other people who do some. And I think we have our, our major gatherers here, at least most of them. Um, so we need to, need to keep at it, you know? Larry? Yeah. How many did you collect last year, last time? Uh, 550. And what, what, was, what was the top figure? I think uh, Susie Gallery had collected over 1,000. Okay. 
don't expect everybody here to collect 500 or 700, but if you can do, you know, another, an hour and a half, you could not put in an hour and a half a week. That's all it's going to take, or a little bit more. You know all the ways to do it. You see somebody on the street, you see somebody in an office, you see somebody, you know, if you can't, if you don't want to go stand in front of the post office, talk to Gary Carnes, get your walking list from your neighborhood, people you probably know. You can collect, you know, it's, it's, it's not that difficult. It just takes, it takes a little commitment and the initiative to do it. Mary, yeah. for the introverts like me, I find it's nice to have a buddy. Yes. Yeah. So if you need somebody to go with, just call, call Melody or George or Gary or, or, or Diane or whoever. Diane's heading up to Seaside effort, which is, you know, kind of a special thing. But, yeah. Sorry, in the mail. Uh, Phil? Thursday. Oh. Thursday. Okay, so Thursday is out, so I would imagine that it will be happening this weekend. I think, are we going to carry some of this or are we going to collect these signatures? Are we going to have some to collect, to take with us as we go? Absolutely. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Let me just make it clear here. We printed up 10,000 extras okay. specifically for distribution. Are they, are they going to occupant or to specific names? They're going to specific names and occupant. And you were taking so for people who don't have information. We're getting them all. You were taking for people who don't want to sign that away or need more information. And give them that. So let's get out there and get these signatures and get the same yeah. Dresser or the film station and so on. These opportunities are only going to be taken advantage. You can only take advantage of those opportunities if you have your clipboard with you. So I just say take your clipboard wherever you go. You go into a store, take it with you. Just take it in a shopping bag. Whatever you do, there are people out there who are willing to support us. If they never get asked, they're not going to get off of their rear ends to go look for you. Some will, most won't. You'll be out there. You're the advocates. You know the information. You know what we need to do. And so hopefully that can happen. We have an office. We're going to have a second office. Um, Gary's going to be on Thursday afternoon at the Center for Change. And then our office are, uh, in Monterey, obviously, is open. Noon to three tomorrow. Noon to three on Wednesdays. And noon to three on Sunday. Um, are, uh, who, who are neighborhood coordinators? Could you stand up or raise your hand or something so we can, those that are here, at least you see where they are. Uh, City Grove and Seaside. Merlene. And Merlene is Carmel Valley, Carmel, Carmel Valley combination. Okay. Oh, no, Jean, Jean's Monterey. Jean is Monterey. Jean's already standing. <laughs> um, uh, so we have. We have a lot of material, but we don't have is a way to stimulate your work except this way. And it's really in our hands. We're in control. We're getting ahead of the game with the mailer. We're getting ahead of the game with Calhan. They just kind of don't know what to do. We're getting a lot of the political support that we didn't get last time. We're getting ahead of the game. But if we falter on the signature side, into the game. Um, I like going down your neighborhood street. Gary can, and we're, we think, I think what we're going to try to do is give you, the, the, those that have signed and agreed to do this, give you a list of your neighborhood. You don't have to ask for it, we're going to give it to you. And then it's up to you to do that. That's the easiest part, really. You can pick your time, you kind of know your neighbors, you can do it in the morning or weekend or before dinner or somewhere, maybe it gets a little lighter, maybe it gets warmer, whatever it is, but you can do that because it's it's not intimidating to just encounter total strangers. They may be total strangers to you in a way, but we'll give you a list that gives you their names, maybe give you their party, party affiliation, we may give you their ages, 
I mean, you'll know more about your neighbors than you ever thought you should. <laughs> but it's useful information when you encounter them because you're more comfortable because you know more about them. Anyway, I'm, we're, we're, we're going to push that. Let me say the Martin Luther King March was just terrific. We have, I, I, I tried to remember all the names that I saw there and who were collecting signatures and so on. There are 15, 16 different people who were collecting signatures. They did a good job. We don't have a, we don't have a tally yet. I know a lot were turning in tonight, uh, but there's still some half sheets out there or partial that are out there. Uh, Jean's coming in with her hand up. Jean? We have 40 completed petitions turned in tonight. Ooh. Great. 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 So yeah. let me say something about, well, my understanding of what happened on the Martin Luther King March. A lot of signature gatherers were with the uh, assembly spot yes. before the march. Yeah. And then some people were at the destination, which is older march center. And then some of you marched with the marchers and still collected signatures, and some of you went along the sidewalk and got other people's signatures. You were very creative, energetic, and you did a good job. That was kind of a warm-up. The big payoff can be the Women's March on Saturday at CSUMB. They're expecting to get the same kind of crowd they get the last time, if not more. They had about 4,000 people last year's march. We have a table there. We expect to be, we, I think we're going to need like 30 signature gatherers there, on site, milling around, beforehand, during the march, People just stand in the street and, you know, if somebody gets an entry, walk with them a little bit and get their signatures and then stop again and get somebody else. Or who you're walking with. You've got to, you've got to just put yourself out there a little bit. Get there early. Uh, yes, get there at 9, 9 o'clock, 9.30. When, when everyone's gathering, they all have the most time. They're not distracted. They're very social. You get most of those signatures before the march begins. Um, Amy. For those of us who get lost out of CSU and me, could you please email the list of the, the location of exactly where we're supposed to be? There's a map on the email that went out. Good. When yeah. did it go out? I think it went out today again. It's, every time I send okay. it out, it's got right. a map on it. And it's four dollars if you get a parking ticket. Yes, there is that little hitch. Uh, you can do it online. The thing I saw, I think. Uh, Melly, I think it's your email, but I'm not sure. I saw an email today that had a place where you could get your parking permit ahead of time. It's a it's a credit card process. No, it wasn't me. Okay. Well, I'll, 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 I'll make sure you're talking about the uh, car? car parking. <coughs> it's easy, easy, easy. It is very easy. Uh, and I made a little mistake and got four instead of two. So I'll give some of it away. But, um, Four bucks or whatever they charge. Four dollars. Yep. Yeah, it's four bucks for the day. It was very easy. Yes. Actually, mm -hmm. Okay, it was good. Very difficult to make for me because I just want to give people this advice. They have a category that says community, and then there's one I think that says students and faculty. Do not click on the community because you think, oh, community, then I get a day pass. But you can't because that's for also getting a semester pass. So you want to go to the very bottom, I think, where it does say, you know, like day pass or something. But um, I, I communicated with the parking department out there. They gave me the But it was not necessarily easy the first time. We have a terrific opportunity on Saturday. Yes. If we show up in a large crowd and we just spread out and mix, no, you know, no specific path to follow, but just mix and walk and try. Be careful to ask where people are registered to vote because there are going to be there yes, yes, and I think well, the advice we got today is the opening line is, have you signed a petition yet? Yeah. Many people will maybe just be getting this flyer, and maybe they won't until a few days later. Um, and then, as Dan said, accept, and say certain areas, it is true, because um, I had a funny experience, just that I said, uh, are you from Seaside? And they said, yes, so they signed it, and they said, Marina. And I said, I thought you were from Seaside. Yes, I was from Seaside. Now I'm here. <laughs> so, so, so asking if they live in is what are they from. <laughs> so, you know, we're in it together. We're in it to win. we got to just push and push and push ourselves. And please do. We're going to be in 
all the people that aren't here, we're going to be calling them or being in touch with them, trying to encourage them to team up with somebody or come by the office. But somehow, somehow, you got they 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 got to help. You can't just depend on the people who get large numbers. Got to get a picture of people who are not getting any at all. And we need to get them to move. So unless anybody has something else to say, we're